Very good morning. My name is Danny. I am one of the worship leaders here at Citywide Church. And um, I am always, I'm just so honored, always honored to be able to bring the word of God to you guys today. Um, how you guys feeling? Everybody's good? Okay, great, great, great. Um, so it's always an honor, always a blessing and a privilege to bring the word to you guys. You know, usually I'm up here um, leading you guys in worship, but whether it's a song or whether it's a sermon, I take it seriously. I understand the weight and the responsibility to bring you what the Lord is saying to you because we come in here to get strength and then we have to go back out there and do life, right? And so it's my conviction that I'll share something with you today that will empower you and give you what you you need like tools that you need to really go out here and live life right you know we're blessed here to have the five-fold ministry so it's biblical it's not churchy but it's biblical so we have the apostle our pastor Louis Burgers has the calling of the apostle on his life right and then the Bible says he gives us pastors an example of a pastor is pastor Mary right give you that nurturing that caring that holding your hand right then we have evangelists like Joshua Samuel that come and preach fire and encourage you to go out to the nations and then we have a prophet our sister Debbie who our quiet powerhouse she'll just be like can I can I talk to you for a minute and just pull you to the side right and then we have teachers we're the last mention but we have teachers <laughs> who are here to make sure that when you come off of your spiritual high that you have some tools in your tool belt, some spiritual tools to help you go walk this thing out, right? Because God has given us everything we need pertaining to life and godliness. So we have what we need to live holy lives acceptable before him. But I want to give you those tools today. So we, um, we're in a series called God Garments, right? And God Garments. See, you know what? You know what the issue is? We were going to name this sermon series Jesus Drip. I feel like <laughs> we should have committed to it. But you know, it's God garments. It's either one, right? We're talking about God garments. And last uh, week, Pastor Mary started us off strong, talking about the God, gar the garment of the new self, right? And um, yes, because she reminded us that God is better than Gucci, right? <laughs> Your God garments will always be better than Gucci. So I'm on assignment today. I have two things I need to accomplish this morning. Number one, I need to just bring you guys into an awareness. I need you guys to know the signs of the times. That's something that we say when we're saying, like, you got to be aware of what's going on. And um, I think, like, in the natural, you know, there are certain markers that happen that let you know, like, there's a shift taking place. Like, when you go to the gas station and you see that gas is now $5, you realize, oh man, like something is happening, right? It's something to let you know when you look at the housing market and you can't really find a house because houses are going left and right, right? You're like, oh man, something has shifted. Um, and the old folks would say like, man, we didn't have it like that back in the day. You realize that something that you were used to is no longer happening. Something new is happening. And in the same way in the spirit, we need to be aware when something new is happening, right? When something is shifting and we need to be able to recognize those markers. So my assignment today, part of it, is just to make sure you're aware that God is shifting shifting us. And I don't say shift to sound deep. I'm saying shift so that you understand that he's moving us from here to there. He wants to move you from here to there, but you need to be aware that he's doing it so you can partner with him, right? So he's shifting something in this house. He's shifting something in his people. And I want to just equip us with what we need for the season that we're in because um, God is speaking. God is speaking. A couple of weeks ago, I shared on the prayer line that we are um, under an open heaven, that God is, and when you're under an open heaven, that means you can ask very bold, like you can have the audacity to ask God for whatever you want, right? And you can, and according to his will, and he will grant that to you. And so um, Mama Lillian came back and she confirmed, yes, I'm glad somebody else knows we're under an open heaven. And that's one of the ways that you'll be able to know if something is shifting because God will send his word and then confirm his word, right? And so we know that we're under an open heaven. We know that God is shifting some things and so I want you to be aware of that because there's a part for you to play in that. The second part of my assignment is just to continue in our series called God Garments. And today we are going to be talking about the garment of praise. Any praisers a little more excited about that? <laughs> we are going to talk about the garment of praise, guys. So let's turn to Isaiah chapter 61. 
and we're going to dive into the scripture. And my prayer again is that you're equipped today. Amen. Okay, so let's read it. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair they will be called oaks of righteousness a planting of the lord for the display of his splendor they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations Strangers will shepherd your flocks, foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called the priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches, you will boast. Now, I read a lot of verses. So let's just pray real quick. I want God to just open up your minds and your ears. I want to break this down for you, all right? Holy Spirit, we invite you into this moment, Lord. We invite you, Lord, to just... Um, overtake us right now God just overtake our minds fill our hearts just open us up God to receive the word that you are releasing over us today God I just pray that it would activate faith I pray that it would move us to to action Lord um, to put works with our faith and most of all I pray that your name is glorified I pray that your your word is um, able to build up today God in a way that only it can so I pray Lord that you would uh, use me father to speak only what you want me to say today God no more and no less let your holy will be done in Jesus name we pray amen all right guys so I read y'all six verses um, and all of them are a part of a prophetic declaration um, that's being made to Israel who are God's chosen people and a servant is speaking to them about what's to come and I read these verses to you because I believe these verses four to six they lay out God's plan for them but it echoes today this is what God is saying over us today that they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. And I know that sounds like ancient talk, but I'm really trying to tell you that God wants to rebuild and restore in this season. He wants to rebuild and restore. He wants to rebuild you and restore you in this season. And the good news is it's not a quick fix. God has a long-term plan for you so that he can rebuild and restore you but you need to be aware of this so you can partner with him amen so right above these verses about God's plan it kind of shows um, promises that are attached to these plans so that's the verses I read from three um, three on the Lord said he is going to proclaim good news to the poor he sent to bind up the brokenhearted He's uh, going to proclaim freedom for the captives and release um, darkness from the prisoners. He's going to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the day of vengeance of our God. He's going to comfort all who mourn. Some people are mourning loss. You've lost people. You've lost jobs. You've lost relationships or friendships. You've lost your confidence. He's getting ready to give that back to you. He's going to provide you the comfort that you need. He's going to uh, provide for those who grieve. Um, he's going to give a be- um, beauty instead of ashes. So a crown of beauty instead of ashes. So sometimes I love the, the term ashes because it's like um it's when things have been completely like disintegrated like disintegrated and there's like nothing there so it's like when you have ashes it's like what can I really do with this we cast them into the ocean right but God's like I can make these ashes beautiful so he's promising to make your ashes beautiful he's going to give you an oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of uh despair and so here we see in these verses there's an exchange happening right these promises are more like an exchange so you give him one thing and he gives you something different so you give him your ashes and he will give you something beautiful in exchange right in your morning he will give you joy and if you are experiencing the spirit of heaviness of being overwhelmed or even depressed God is going to give you a garment of praise and that's what we're talking about today that should be good news for 
you today. That there's something on the way that you can exchange for what you've been carrying in. So we're going to focus on verse 3. We're going to focus on praise. Not just because the topic for today is the garment of praise, but we're focusing on praise because I believe that in this season, praise is going to need to be your weapon of choice. Do you understand? We all have spiritual weapons that we kind of lean towards. We have our prayers in here. Where y'all prayers at? You pray in the car. You pray wherever you are. You pray at the drop of a dime, right? Our prayer warriors in here. You keep on praying, but in this season, you're going to have to couple it with prayer, right? Where are our fasters at in here? I know we're few in here, but where are our fasters at? I know you like to fast, but you're going to have to add praise to the mix, right? All of you guys who love to just soak up the word and eat the word, where are our Bible scholars at, our theologians in here, right? Uh, You keep on reading the word, but praise is going to be coupled with that. You need to add praise to your weapon, your uh, arsenal, so that you'll know how to fight in this season. So I want to teach you about praise because it's going to be pivotal. So to kind of paint this picture, we're going to go to Acts chapter 16. It's a very familiar scripture. We're going to go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. Here in the scripture, we find Paul and Silas. Now, Paul is a disciple of Christ, and Silas is his best friend. And they're just going about their day. They are just healing people, sharing the good news, minding their business. I like to say that because I, I feel like I live a life where I just like to mind my business. Anybody else like that? Live a quiet life. I don't got to be in your business. Like, I just do my thing. I walk with the Lord, and I just try to mind my business. I be obedient, and that's about it, right? That's what Paul and Silas were doing, minding their business when some random chick came up to them and started bothering them, started antagonizing them. And Paul was trying to ignore her, but you ever had somebody that just... They went one moment too long. Like they said one more thing when you, after you said, if you say one more thing. So she came in and did one more thing at the Paul was like, if you do one more thing, right? And so he ends up um, casting out the spirit out of her. And this spirit allowed her to tell people's fortunes. And unfortunately, Paul didn't know that that was somebody's cash cow. Like somebody was making money off of that gift. So once they realized that she wasn't able to tell fortunes anymore, they were upset. So they came over to Paul and Silas. They accused them of something wrong or uh, falsely accused them. And then Paul and Silas got thrown into prison. How messed up is that? Like I was minding my business and now I'm in prison. So we're, this is where we come in. We find Paul and Silas in prison. It says the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. So I want to just back it up because when we read the Bible, sometimes we like to overlook things. They were severely beaten. Like, this is not like a busted lip. They were severely beaten. And in the Roman times, they loved to torture you. They loved to beat you to just within an inch of your life, just so you would wish that they actually went the whole way and killed you. So this is Paul and Silas in prison right now. Probably got migraine, bruises, and pain coming from all directions. Like, they are messed up at this point, and they're in this um, dungeon, the inner cell, right? Now, I don't know what your experience is with prison. Maybe you were in prison, or maybe you visited someone in prison but even your image of prison does not compare to the prison that they were in because they were in a wet cold dark dungeon just licking their wounds basically after being beat so this is where we find Paul and Silas experiencing the spirit of heaviness and I can imagine Paul's thinking right like let me just wait a minute like let me just retrace my steps today I got up I spent time with the Lord. I got out. I was minding my business. I was sharing the gospel. And now I'm in jail? Like, make it make sense. Like, I'm sure he was in a moment of a little confusion because how did I get here, right? Have you ever been in that situation where you're like, man, I was, how did I get here? How is my life looking like this? I was just minding my business. I've been loving people, giving to people, doing the best that I can. We're not perfect, but how many are just like, I'm just doing the best that I can. And even in my best, I find myself in a situation where the math is not mathing, right? It's not adding up for me. Like there's a discrepancy here. No, Lord, I'm serving you. So why does my bank account look like this? Or Lord, I'm serving you. So why does my marriage look like this? Or Lord, I'm serving you and I'm an excellent employee. Why are they not giving me what they're supposed to pay me? 
Like, why do I have to come and ask you for a raise? You see me show up on time. You see, you see me do the work that I do. This is not adding up. So there's a spirit of heaviness that we carry because we're seeing the discrepancies in our lives. There's a heaviness that we carry. And maybe you're just like, I'm, oh, but that's just life. You're carrying heaviness and don't even realize it. I gave an example uh, last week or even last this past week. And I was carrying a very heavy bag. And um, a gentleman asked me, do you need help with that? And I was like, oh, no, I'm good. And y'all, I was not good. Like, I really needed him to help me. And once I realized I had to go up two flights of steps with this heavy bag, I was mad at myself. Like, Danny, why didn't you let that man help you? But man, I'm so used to doing things on my own. I'm so used, nope, I got it. Nope, I got it. And you don't realize the weight that you're carrying is heavy. But God said he will give you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. But here's Paul in his dark place, and I'm trying to figure out how in the world is he about to praise God like sometimes he has a migraine like for starters I know he has a migraine I don't even need the Bible to tell me he has he has a migraine anybody ever had a migraine you don't want to talk you turn the lights off I know he has a migraine you've been beat flogged I don't even want to go into the type of weapons they use back in the day but you were flogged and so now he's sitting here with pain coming from all different directions they stripped him and then beat him and now he's in this very very dark place now I don't know about y'all I like to keep it real when I find myself in a very very dark place the last thing I want to do is praise the Lord it's just, it don't come naturally for me. I know I'm a praise and worship leader, but when I'm in that dark, dark, can I just be real? When I'm in that dark, dark place, I'm not about to say, God, thank you so much. I don't know how I'm going to pay my rent next month. God, thank you so much. They're not paying me fairly. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. They just betrayed me and talked about me and dragged my name through the mud. Thank you so much. I praise you, Lord. I have a problem trying to reconcile how Paul would find himself in this moment and then begin to praise the Lord. But that's exactly what he did. Paul says in this next verse, it says that Paul ended up singing songs, singing hymns to God about midnight. And uh, the other prisoners were listening to them. Paul, I believe, got to the end of himself. Because a lot of times we have these questions, we're trying to reason it and find the logic, trying to figure out if one plus one equals two. Once you're done with all that and you get quiet in your spirit, have you ever been in that place where a song just pops up in your mind or a song just pops up in your spirit? Like, where did that song come from? I haven't even heard this song in a while. Or maybe if you got too much noise around you, God will actually put a song in your kids. And so your kid will start singing a song of worship. And you're like, where did you sing that song? And it starts blessing you. It's the Holy Spirit that is enabling you. It's the Holy Spirit that's singing over you. The Holy Spirit is always praying for you. You know that. He's always interceding for you. But do you know he's always singing too? He's always singing. If you quiet yourself long enough, you will hear the song of the Lord. And that song will be exactly what you need in that moment. It'll be, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. Like, man, I don't even believe that. Why am I singing that? Let me keep on singing it. For the battle belongs to you. Like, it's the Lord trying to instill that in you in your moment of darkness and weakness that he's getting ready to show up in your situation. That's so powerful when it comes to, that's the power of praise. So they're singing, they're mustering up the strength and they sing from that dark place and I believe it's because point number one Paul understood that your praise is most impactful in it and not after it it'll be easy to worship God and praise him when it's all said and done right but it's another level when you can be in that dark place and still lift up your voice and say God you're still worthy God I still love you God even in this I'm not gonna go back I'm not gonna go to my old devices I'm gonna stand right here and see the salvation of the Lord your praise is most impactful in it the best time to praise God is now The best time to give him praise is now. You don't have to wait and say, oh, when I come out of this test, 
When I come out of this trial, I'm going to praise God so hard they're not going to be able to hold me back in church. Oh, let me get to church. Oh, I'm going to praise them so bad when I get to church. You praise God right where you are. You praise him in your car. You praise him in the bathroom. You praise him in that secret place. That right there is where your praise is the most impactful. And what you need to know is that the moment that you praise, you're inviting God into your situation. That's what your praise is doing. Talking about the purpose. This is what it does. Praise lets God know, God, I want you here with me. Like, I want you in this with me. I invite you into this. I don't even know what to do about this. I invite you into this situation. Help me. (laughs) I invite you into this situation. Just be with me. Hold my hand. Walk with me. Be my father. And God delights in your praise. So once you're praising, you welcome him here. And here's the great part. You ever hear a worshiper say like, oh, um, something happens when you praise them. Something happens when you pray. If you've been in church a long time, this is what they always say. Like something ought to happen when you praise them. And it's true. But what's more true is that anything can happen when you praise him. Anything can happen when God decides to show up in your situation. Anything can happen. And what I want to encourage you is that when God steps into your situation, don't try to give him your suggestions. Don't say, oh God, now that you're here, let me tell you what you could do. No, let God be God, right? Because at some point, you'll get to the point where you say, God, as long as you're here with me, I'm okay. As long as you see me, I'm okay. As long as I know you hear me, I'm okay. So you can do whatever you want to do in this situation. I just needed to know that you were with me. And this is what happens with Paul in the prison because after he started singing, guess what? The ground began to shake. There was an earthquake. There was an earthquake. And the Bible says that all of the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Listen, (laughs) I always like to put myself in a situation. Bruh, there was an earthquake. (laughs) Like we can read the Bible and look over that. There was an entire earthquake. Oh my goodness. And the doors flew open. But guess what? Something so weird happened. Nobody left. God opened the door. God stepped in the situation. God gave them a way to get out. And they was like, oh no, oh, you with me now? You're here? You see me? You're, oh, we good. Gone. He told the jailer, don't worry, don't panic. We're all here. How powerful is that? When you get to the point where you realize, I'm in this dark place, but you're making me. I'm in this dark place, but you're molding me. Do you know that Paul goes on to say in Philippians, I've learned how to be content. In whatever space I find myself in, I've learned how to be a base. I've learned how to abound. I've learned when I, to be okay when I have plenty and when I have nothing. Paul got to that point off of this right here. This moment right here was building him up to a point where he could say, I've learned to be content in every situation. Can you get to that point where you realize the situation you're in is getting you to a place that God has designed for you so you're okay in it? Will you be okay in it? Praising God in it, even if God chooses not to change it? That's the maturity that happens with your praise, right? This is the maturity that takes place with your praise. So listen, you don't praise God, point number two. You don't praise God to avoid reality. You praise God to shift reality. Sometimes people think like, oh, y'all doing all that. They don't take all of that. All this jumping and screaming, they don't take all of that. Like, I'm just not, that's y'all too emotional. I'm just not like that. God didn't build me like that. I like to keep it calm and cool. No, listen, we're not over here trying to avoid reality. We're over here shifting reality because we understand when God shows up, everything changes. Anything can happen when we begin to praise the Lord. I remember when um, one day, I have these, um, I don't know if anybody else does this, but the Holy Spirit prompted me to start doing these praise days. I, I know it doesn't sound cool, but it's a praise day. Basically, the Holy Spirit would be like, Danny, why don't you just praise me? I'm like, oh, you want me to praise you like all day? It's like, yeah, all day. So from sun up to sundown, I got my praise music on. I keep a praise on my lips. If I'm talking to you in between, I'm talking to you, but then I'm going back to my praise, right? So I remember one day I was doing this. I praised God all day long. And guess what? The next morning, someone stole my car. Right off my front lawn. (laughs) 
stole my car. And let me tell you, because I had praised God all day, the day before, it was like a shield was around me. I wasn't even phased. I called Bridgeport police and y'all know. The car was stolen at eight. They didn't come back to see about it until like two o'clock <laughs> when I called them at eight. And it didn't even matter. I said, you know what, Bridgeport police, y'all could take all day to get to me. I'm calling Jesus. Y'all, I promise you. In my moment, I call, I said, Jesus, I, I just ask you, I command my angels to go get my car and bring it back to me. Y'all, my car came back within 24 hours. Not even damaged. My car came back within 24 hours. So sometimes when you have an unction to praise or sometimes when we're telling you to praise, you don't even realize you're praising not for this moment, but for what's to come. You don't know what lies ahead. And God is giving you that, building you up in your praise to create that shield that no matter what the enemy does to you, you're still going to be okay. And you have the ability not to avoid reality, but to shift your reality. Because the reality is my car was gone. But through my praise, I got that car right back. I remember when I had a job interview and I was on one of my praise days and I'm headed up from Bridgeport to Meriden and I don't know what happened. I don't even know how I got there because Jesus must have just took the will because I was up in glory praising God. I remember, never forget the day I was singing this song um, about uh, I seen you move, you move the mountains and I believe I'll see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way and I believe I'll see you do it again. Man, when I got, I'll see you do it again, I was just gone, right? And so I get to Meriden, and it's been a while since I was in that situation where it was like multiple candidates in the conference room. I was like, they about to just get this praise overflow because I kept, I seen you, I was humming, I was like swinging in my chair. And I realized in this moment in the conference room, I saw all the competition, I didn't even care. I started praying for my competition. I started saying, God bless them. If it's theirs, give it to them. Mind you, I really needed it and I really wanted it but my praise invited God into my situation and I realized give me the job or don't give me the job we still gonna be all right I shifted my reality I walked into that interview and they were acting like hard people like they didn't really like me and I was just I was like y'all trying to bring my energy down I'm staying right here did my interview left the job before I made it home they offered me the job before I got home they were like, we want you to know in like 30 years, we've never, ever done, we've never hired somebody on the spot. I'm like, that's the kind of God that I serve. He, listen, anything can happen when you praise, but you have to understand the power in your praise. This is not something we just do because we feel like it. It's not just bodily exercise. Some of us have learned how to weaponize our praise. And what I'm telling you is you have to learn how to use your praise in this season to partner with God and what he's doing in your life. So we get back to the scripture. All the gates have opened up and uh, nobody leaves. But you know what happened? the jailer comes to them and he lays on his face and he says what must I do to be saved point number three is that your praise will always reap a harvest your praise will always reap a harvest not only was this jailer saved but he took them cleaned up their wounds and then he brought them to his family and then the jailer's family got saved and baptized Paul won souls. Paul won souls just from starting that little praise in the prison. I can imagine when Paul was just in that dark, everybody's just miserable. It's a dark, cold, and wet prison. And here goes Paul. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes and fights for me. So I'm gonna sing in the middle of the storm louder and louder. You're gonna hear my man. And then Silas looks over at Paul's like, is he singing? And he's like, all right, I guess I'm just gonna join you. Okay, up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is. 
But then it says that the jailer started listening in too. So Paul sings a little bit louder. I'm going to sing in the middle of the storm. Oh, louder and louder. You're going to hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated. The king is alive. Now you need to understand that in this moment, Paul has no idea whether they're going to let him get out the next day. He doesn't know if they're going to just change their minds and decide if they're going to kill him. He has no idea what his fate is, but he begins to sing the song that the Holy Spirit gave him on the inside and it began to have a ripple effect. So I decree over you that your praise will have a ripple effect because the jailer got saved. The jailer's family got saved and baptized. And then he came back. And let me tell you, let me just cover this because this is my favorite part. You know, you ever had like, um, you ever, it's nothing like when you're in a game and you're losing and then the tables turn and then you start winning, right? Like if you ever, I don't know, my, my family plays Parcheesi. It's an old game or something like, oh, y'all know about Parcheesi? Yeah, so we play Parcheesi, and some, sometimes we play Monopoly, but you know, the person who's in charge, sweeping up the board, they talk so much junk, right? Even Uno, people talk so much junk, but in all of these games, the tables can turn like that, right? And now you want the upper hand, so now you got a little battery in your back, and you're like, man, nah, you was talking all that junk, run me that plus two, run me that draw four, like, you're talking junk now. This is what Paul did, because once he got to back in prison, right, he went baptized saved the family, went back to prison, y'all. Listen, the, the authorities heard about all that was going on. They was like, yo, tell Paul and them they could get out. Like, let Paul and them, they could just get out. Yo, Paul, let me tell y'all what Paul said. Because <laughs> Paul is a gangster. He had a little battery in his back. He's like, oh, oh no, God is with me, so I could do whatever I want right now, right? <laughs> he had, a, um, he had a, a battery in his back. So he said, they beat us publicly without a trial, even though we are Roman citizens and threw us into prison. And now do they want to get rid of us quietly? No. Let them come themselves and escort us out. Don't you love his bonus? That's how I feel in the enemy. Like, yo, you tried to play with my mind. You tried to play with my finances. You tried to mess with my family. You tried to keep me depressed. You tried to make me think I wasn't nothing. You tried to make me turn back around. And now you want to quietly walk off? Nah, I don't go like that. Give me back my stuff. Give me back what you took from me. Give me back everything that I lost. You owe me. My father is with me. You owe me. Give it back to me. And what I love about this in Isaiah 61 in verse 7 all the way down, it's a promise, another promise. I didn't read it to you guys at first. But this is another promise right tied along with this. It said, instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And instead of this disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land. And everlasting joy will be yours. That is the promise of the Lord over you in this season. You will recover all. God is going to rebuild you. God is going to restore you. God is going to put you back where you belong. He's going to establish you. And the gates of hell will not prevail against you. He's going to give you double. I decree the Job blessing. He will give you double for everything you lost. God is going to give you double. But let me tell you, you want to partner with him in this season? In. You keep praying, but you praise God. I need you to shift from just asking to thanking him. I need you to shift from just asking and waiting. What if I told you that your waiting is over? What if I told you today your waiting is over? That everything you've been praying for, God is releasing in this season. And all you have to do is praise. If I knew that when I praise, that it shifts my reality. If I knew that when I praise, it invites God into my situation. If I knew that when I praise, that it would produce a harvest, you wouldn't stop me from praising. You wouldn't be able to stop me from giving God praise. Because I know now the power and the purpose of my praise. You guys can stand up on your feet. 
just need anybody, maybe just a few people who can believe the word of the Lord over your life in this season. That you're getting ready to receive double for everything that you lost. That God is going to rebuild you and restore you and place your feet on the solid rock. No more sinking sand. No more back and forth. We serve a God who doesn't play you. James, in the book of James, it says that he doesn't cast shifting shadows. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So you can count on him. You can bank on him. And the only thing that he, sometimes I think it's a little unfair. God really does make it so easy. Look at our weapons. Look at the weapons he's given us. Praise. Praise is your weapon in this season. And guess what? God doesn't even need your praise. Right now, as you're looking at me and as I'm looking at you, heaven is giving God the highest praise right now. 24-7. All around his throne, they're bowing before him, calling him and crying out, holy, 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 hallelujah to the great. They're praising him. He doesn't even need your praise, but he delights in your praise. He loves when you praise. He loves when you open your mouth. You may not be able to sing. You may never get on the worship team, but he still wants to hear your song. You may not be able to dance, but he still wants you to dance before him like David. Listen, I know I can't dance. I know I don't have that much rhythm. It's all right. It's okay. I still do it. <laughs> I still do it. I do it because I understand the power in my praise. I've learned how to weaponize my praise. But guess what? When I'm up here, I don't mind looking crazy because I want you to know that you can praise God too. In whatever way that you want or whatever way that you need to. Some people run. Some people bow. Some people kneel. Some people dance. Some people draw. Whatever you need to do to praise the Lord, you have free license to do it in here. Because this is going to be the key to unlock these promises. Yes, obey God. Absolutely. Y'all know that, right? Because if you're in disobedience, none of this even applies to you. I'm so sorry. But it's okay. You can get it right today. We can always get back into alignment with God, right? If you feel like you're in disobedience, you can still read your word. Please do. Please pray. Please fast. But praise is going to be your weapon of choice. If you've never had a praise party by yourself... I invite you this week, pick a day, pick a day. All right, this day is going to be my praise day. Everything, don't ask him for a thing. Just praise him. And you come back with the report. You let me know how it goes. You let me know what was unlocked for you. That's your assignment this week. Can we do that? I'm going to open up the altar because I sense that there are some people that want to learn how to weaponize your praise. And I just, I want to just open up the floor also for individuals who really are bound in their praise. I'm talking about people that you, you want to lift your hands. You want to dance. You want to give God praise. And maybe it's conviction that's keeping you from feeling like you could do it. Maybe it's just like, um, I don't know, there's a hindrance that's keeping you from praising. I want you specifically to come to the altar today. I remember when I had a spirit of oppression. Never had this before. I had a spirit of oppression. Didn't even realize it. Somebody pointed it out to me. I was like, I don't even know what that is, right? I had a spirit of oppression. And I realized this spirit not only stole my praise, but even when I read the word of God, I wasn't able to read the parts of the word that were giving me life. I couldn't say them out loud. So I'm sitting in this cafe with a sister in Christ and she's like, just say simple words. Say, God, God wants you to bloom. Say, I will bloom. Y'all, I was stuttering as if I didn't even know how to say the words. The spirit had brought, like got my tongue. It was captive. So I would say, I, I can't say it. She says, see, that spirit of oppression has you bound. You can't even speak life over yourself. Say it again. It's like, I, I will, 
I can't. I just, it was something in there. There was a blockage. Do you know this woman sat with me and she talked with me and she said, no, you say it. That spirit is coming out of you today. Say, I will bloom. Say, I will bloom. Say, I will bloom. Say, I will prosper. Say, I will achieve great things. Just, and, and before I knew it, I went from stuttering, I will, I will bloom. I didn't, I didn't even feel like I believed it. But just when I was able to, I will bloom. Bloom, bloom, I will bloom, I will bloom. And as I began to speak those words, that spirit left, it never came back. I never want to be in a place where I can't praise God because it is a powerful weapon. So specifically for those of you who feel like you cannot lift your hands or you feel like, I don't even know how to like get started, right? <laughs> like you feel like all oh, these church people have been doing this for years. I don't really know what my praise will look like. It doesn't even matter. I wanna make sure that you're able to do that. If you have resonated with anything in this message, if you feel like you're in a dark place and you don't know how you're gonna muster up praise, or maybe you felt like you were a praiser, but you need to level up in your praise because now you realize it's a weapon and you wanna know how to use Used it in this season or maybe you've suffered loss you've suffered loss and you're waiting and you're waiting and now you hear there's a double portion that's ready for you and you want to take hold of that promise if any of these apply to you I want you to come right now come from wherever you are come from wherever you are right now do not hesitate come right now because the spirit of the Lord is upon me the spirit of the Lord is here he is here to give you come on that comfort that comfort that joy the oil of joy the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness come on you said when I come to church I'm gonna be free I feel God saying, I want to give you a new freedom. I want to give you a freedom you've never experienced before. A new freedom. You don't even know what it feels like. God wants to give you something new today. He's ready to give you and show you another side of him. Whew, I just feel freedom in the house. Hallelujah. I feel freedom in the house for you. If you want to step into your new freedom, come now. Come from wherever you are. Come from wherever you are. Yes, we are here. We're here to pray with you. We're here to equip you. You don't have to leave here bound today. You don't have to leave here bound. There's no reason to leave here bound when God wants you to be free. God wants to partner with you. God wants to come into your situation. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.